get into that story. Rhino poaching has decreased in South Africa by almost 53% during the first six months of 2020. This year, 166 rhinos were killed for their horns. The Environmental Affairs Department says COVID-19 lockdown regulations helped limit poaching. Minister Barbara Creasy does join us now live to discuss this. A very good afternoon to you, Minister, and thank you very much for your time. So to what extent exactly has this national lockdown, which of course is only about four and a half to five months long, helped in the decrease of the poaching? Yes, uh, good afternoon to you and greetings, of course, to all of your viewers. Well, I think that um, in the first six months of this year, we saw 166 animals being poached across the country. This compares with 316 in the same period last year. So we can see that in the months of April, May and June, there was a considerable decrease in the number of rhinos poached. And for the first time in 10 years, we didn't lose a single animal in April this year in the Kruger National Park. Minister... So, of course, yes. No, no, apologies, you can carry on. Of course, the, the lockdown has assisted us uh, because it, the, the restrictions on national travel have disrupted the global supply chain. But I think it's also important to pay tribute to the criminal justice system as a whole um, we now have a situation where this year we've had a 100% prosecution success rate in cases that we've taken to court. And we've seen offenders getting in the region of uh, 20 years, 18 year sentences. So, uh, yes, national lockdown has been successful, but I think what is also being successful is consequence management of these offenses. I have to also say, because yesterday was National Ranger Day, that we must take our hats off to our rangers. They worked throughout the lockdown period. Um, I receive regular reports on incursions and uh, operations to follow up on these incursions. And uh, we must pause to take a minute to salute these very brave men and women who are on the front line of the struggle against rhino poaching and, of course, all forms of illegal wildlife trafficking. Minister, of course, the, uh, you attributed to COVID-19, the national lockdown of it at least, you know, for this decrease, which is coming up to about 53%. But what exactly has been done differently, you know, apart from this uh, lockdown that has helped this decrease? Look, I, I think, as I say, first of all, let's take our, our hats off to our rangers. Um, they, they work around the clock and um, there, there is very systematic follow-up, particularly in places like the Kruger Park. As soon as there's an incursion, there is a, there's a very systematic follow-up. Um, we also have very systematic follow-ups in um, others of our, of our national parks. Um, we are using technology, we are using dogs, and I think all, all of these, these um, attributes assist us. But um, there's also much better working of the criminal justice system as a whole. We're working better with the police. We're working better with the uh, National Directorate of Public Prosecutions. And so we are finding that offenders are, are in fact being imprisoned. You would also know that SARS is doing its bit. There was a very big bust at O.R. Tambo yeah. International Airport where 115 million rands worth of rhino horn were confiscated a couple of weeks back. And I think, I think all of this is making the trade much more difficult to operate. Does this opportunity now of the national lockdown and this decrease allow for an opportunity for the department to perhaps, you know, strengthen certain areas that it may find are not as strong as it'd like to be in terms of security, in terms of, you know, you mentioned how the judicial system is doing its part as well, but does this brief period of some peace, if one may want to put it that way, not give the department an opportunity to strengthen certain areas? Yes, I think that... Um you know, uh, while we can be very pleased about the operations in Kruger, we have to also recognize that uh, poaching is being displaced uh, to other areas, particularly um, in KZN. And what that means is that we have to be helping our provincial authorities 
to be introducing some of the mechanisms that we've introduced so successfully in the Kruger Park. And as you say, if you get a, a, a temporary respite in one area, then obviously you have to shift support and resources to be supporting other areas. Minister, what are some of the numbers, if you have them, in terms of the population, the runner population in this country? Where exactly is it sitting? Well, I, I don't want to uh, encourage people on the supply side, so I'd, I'd rather not uh, go into that, but there are, there are consistent uh, scientific studies, and uh, obviously it's, it's not a secret that the population has suffered yeah. as a result of the incursions that have taken place over the last 20 years. Is the ministry the last 10 years of course. Is the ministry satisfied with the security? I mean, you do say that you take your hats off to what they've done so far, especially in a national lockdown that has been so tough on many a South African. But is the ministry happy with the security in terms of the approach and the methods and, and how they go about making sure that these numbers continue to decrease beyond, you know, this first six months of the year? I did have an opportunity during the lockdown to, to visit Kruger, and I also had an opportunity to um, understand a little bit better the pursuit operations that, that take place. Um, obviously, in Kruger, there, there is air support. Um, there are also these, these amazing uh, tracker dogs that they have, and I think the, the combination of air and ground support is really what is allowing um, a more successful operations in the Kruger Park. So I think that um, it's it's very impressive, but uh, it's very dangerous. It's very very dangerous operations. Um, uh, the many of the poachers are incurring are coming into um, our parks from across our borders. They are very heavily armed. It's it's very dangerous and. You would know that two years ago uh, we did lose one one ranger, and we do have to take account of the fact that these men and women are putting their lives on the line for our country and, and for our tourism assets day in and day out. What can the ordinary South African do, Minister? I mean, obviously these are very organized and incredibly dangerous syndicates that are operating in the country where you know, runner poaching is concerned, but what can the ordinary South African do to perhaps assist, you know, Kruger, for example, or even the ministry and security services to ensure that these numbers do continue to drop? Well, I think that um, the most important thing that all of us have to do is we have to support communities who live on the boundaries of the park. Uh, we know that poaching is a syndicated operation, but we also know that young people living in communities around the park are very vulnerable to temptations from these syndicates. And uh, the more we can support these communities, the more we can provide alternative forms of livelihood, the more that even under these very, very limited conditions at the moment, we can uh, visit our parks and support the tourism offerings in the parks, the more we can make sure that there are meaningful livelihoods for, for young people in rural communities so that they can't be tempted by these syndicates. Just before I let you go, Minister, I mean, obviously there's been, you know, an, a, an improvement in the tourism sector where now, you know, residents, South Africans are allowed to just, inter, you know, provincially travel and perhaps go to your Kruger National Parks and all of these wild parks out there, these resorts and nature reserves. I mean, is, is the ministry, is, is the industry prepared for an influx of, of South Africans to come out there and do their particular animal viewing? Yes, you, you would know that um, for some time now, uh, we've, we've been allowing day drives and day visitors, and obviously um, Sand Parks has very strict hygiene protocols in place to protect visitors and to protect our own staff. And of course, now that we will be moving towards uh, overnight accommodation for those visitors who would be within their province of residence, we will continue with those protocols and uh, Sand Parks has indicated that they are finalizing those protocols and they will be posting on their website very soon when people can visit and uh, what the relevant terms and conditions would be. Thank you very much, Minister. That is Minister Barbara Creasy of the Department of Environmental Affairs, Fisheries and Forestry.